Hello and welcome to the next round of the Clubman class for the GT Sport Club 100 GT Sport Championship. My name is David Whitehouse and I'm here to take you through the action for tonight's races. As you can see on track at the moment the drivers are just testing the limits around the Spa Francorchamps circuit. This is where our first race will be held tonight. If you do enjoy what you see, head over to the channel, subscribe to the channel, like the video and share it out among the world. I also have the live chat open tonight so if you'd like to leave any comments, show your support for any drivers or ask any questions about Club 100 or this championship ourselves or the UKC, feel free to pop them in and I'll try and answer them the best I can. But just to, in case you haven't been with us, we'll just quickly run through what happened last week and what we're looking at for the evening ahead. So last week we had two races and the opening round in these Red Bull Junior cars was won by Martin Robinson with Ollie Smith and Harry Neal rounding out the podium. That was in the Red Bull Juniors, I can't quite remember a circuit myself. But we also had a second race in the GR4 cars where we had a race around Suzuka where Ollie Smith won it from Martin Robinson and Eric Mignon rounded out the podium in third place. The fastest lap there going to Sam Dimelo, the championship organiser and Club 100 test driver. As you can see, the drivers are currently heading round Spa in the wet. I don't know why Sam always picks it in the wet because he struggles. He always says he struggles with it, but fair enough. So just to quickly run you through what's happening tonight. Tonight we will have a Red Bull Junior race around Spa, which is the cars and circuit you can see on the screen right now. As we just have a look at Ollie Smith starting a quick lap, only five thousandths of a second off Harry Neal, and that will be in the wet. And then we'll head to the classic Interlaga circuit in Brazil for round four in the GR4 cars. Now if you haven't been with us before, this opening race will be with no tyre wear and no fuel wear, whereas the second race does have tyre wear and I believe it's time six on the fuel wear, so the need to stop is there and the need to save fuel if you don't want to stop is also there. I think we saw a one-stop strategy working at Suzuka but at Interlagos it could be all different, completely different type of circuit. Looking at the championship so far, we have Martin Robinson leading as he is on fastest in this session as well. There he is in the Alpine livery. He leads on for six points, that fastest lap in race one, just giving him the edge over Ollie Smith, who's on 45. And then, as the title of this video suggests, who will catch these two? Because the next group of drivers are Harry Neal, Sam Dimelo and Eric Mignon, all on 25 points each. Down in sixth is Peter Harris on 23, who had a brilliant race around Suzuka until it all went wrong about three quarters of the way through. Cameron Biggs is close behind on 21, so four points cover five drivers there in the race third place and all importantly the final qualifying spot to move up into the top class. Sam Taylor the newcomer to the championship who's currently fourth in this session there he is on screen now he is six, on 16 points and had a solid debut you know not spectacular but solid enough and last in the championship is well not last but Tim Maragon's on 13 and 13 points and he's the last to score because we do have uh, Jay Elliott who's in the championship but can't make it again tonight that's you know that's real world life we can't always make it out onto the circuit so hopefully Jay will be able to join us next week as we just see Sam Taylor going past a, a car going off the track. In the Constructors' Championship, 
that second place was Ollie Smith and Mignon's podium put them, the team in red, top of the table on 70 points. Second place goes to Martin Robinson and Peter Harris who are on 69, so that one point difference is there on the top of the Constructors Championship as well. In third place is the two Sams, Taylor and Dimelo with 41 points. Cameron Biggs and Tim Maragon are on 35 and Harry Neal and Jay Elliott on 25. But the qualifying session is about to begin so let's head over to the action at Spa and see who will get the pole position for this opening race of the night. Always remember this is the only qualifying session that is on tonight. The second race is a reverse grid race of tonight's result, of this race result. So we'll um, let the drivers head out on their current laps. You can see the 66 there uh, of Harry Neal who got a podium in the opening round of the season. Some of the liveries may have changed a little bit from the opening round every driver is able to but this will be a flat out sprint through the rain of Spa and we already have a car going completely sideways there that was Cameron Biggs who has already said to me will I hit the wall again well that's down to you Cameron um, Suzuka you hit the wall heading into the pits we caught that on camera and to be honest the Spa pit lane if you do have to pit at Spa is a lot tighter. Luckily the pit stop race is at Interlagos so you might be alright. It's a lot easier to get into pit lane there than it is at Suzuka so we'll give you the benefit of the doubt there. But the drivers are heading ground. It's going to be quite a long warm up lap for these guys so you're not going to get many um, chances to set a qualifying lap around Spa this tonight. It is a uh, circuit which is not the easiest to get round quickly and also it's quite long an F1 car is about 1 minute 50, 1 minute 49 so in these I probably expect slightly slower especially in the rain but um, we will see how that goes we're just waiting, there's just some messages coming through from the lobby one, so I'm just checking them out, making sure none of them affect us before this qualifying session begins. But we will pick our championship leader to go on board with a lap as he comes round towards the start of his qualifying lap, his first qualifying lap. We'll go on board with him now as he heads into the chicane we'll put the data on so you can all see what he chooses goes for a wide line tries to straighten up the car on the curb keeps off the curb actually there on the exit of the chicane and not full throttle across the line but get looks like he is on a quick lap breaks around 75 meters before the first corner just missing the apex there but that could be a tactic in the rain to find the grip accelerates nicely out of the corner I am driven these cars in the rain as it, Martin Robinson now heads down to Eau Rouge and over the top of Radion. Will he keep it flat? Oh, big wiggle in the middle there for Robinson. That will probably bring null of null his. Yes, there we go. A penalty comes up for him for the corner cut. It wasn't his fault, he was just trying to collect the slide. That might scrap his lap now. Up into Lecom. Will he clip the curbs? Yes, he tries to take a bit of the curbs. Finds a grip as he comes through the left hander. Third gear, keeping the wheel spin at a minimum. Runs a little bit wide on that corner. And he heads down to Rivage. How will this go? He goes to the inside early to try and find some grip. Slide in the back end as he tries to get a bit of power. Cuts in early, keeps off that racing line as he's accelerates away again misses the curb on the outside just trying to oh hits that one and it's oh a bit slidey there for Robinson out of the corner with no name and here we go there's a bit of a river across the circuit 
there. That poo on. Bees managed to get it round and we head up to the Fania chicane. Down to third gear. Trying to get rid of that penalty on this lap. Turns into the second part of Fania, sliding it through. You can just see the back end just sliding out and him having to control it. Oh, I thought the back end was going to come round there, but he controls it nicely on the throttle. Does he go flat? No, half throttle through that corner there onto the back straight, and now he'll head towards Blanchemont. And this will be all interesting. Will he keep it flat through Blanchemont, or will he back off and keep it within the track limits? No, easily flat through Blanchemont, even in the rain. Tries to get rid of some of the penalty there, that's why he breaks a little bit early. Down into the chicane, down into the second gear. Keeping wheel spin down, there's a blue flag just coming out because probably there's a car close behind him. And that is a lap of your spa circuit. And so we'll go back outside the car and Robinson comes across the line 2-4-2 but that will be beat. We know he had a penalty. Peter Harris goes quick, is quickly followed by Harry Neal. But actually, even with that penalty, that's a very quick lap by Martin Robinson. 2-24-4-2-9 and Pole is currently Harry Neal on a 4-2-3. So even with that backing off, I'd expect Robinson to be straight back onto bowl position at the end of this next lap, only half a second behind. And remember, he got rid of half a second penalty. But currently, it's Harry Neal who's gone top of the timesheets in the green monster machine with 2.42.3. Ahead of Cameron Briggs and Peter Harris, Martin Robinson slotted into fourth on the lap that we were on board with. And fifth is... Ollie Smith second in the championship just behind his championship rival you can see the spray coming up from these cars the aerodynamics pushing the water out off the track so we won't see the circuit dry that's not something that's on GT Sport oh as Harry Neal goes round on his second lap so he will be he will probably have one chance remaining to complete a lap so he tries to stay out of everybody's way and will rejoin the circuit as Cameron Biggs has just gone past him. But we'll go back to is it Martin Robinson. Here he is heading down towards Puan. Sliding it through there. He's got a lovely bit of car control on that car at the moment. Obviously been out practicing in the wet to make sure he is ready for this event. Keeping it nice and tidy. He's not sliding the car in the wrong places. As, as I say that, it's like, oh, that was nicely done by Martin through there. He got it turned in with the slide. And I've got a feeling this is going to be the end of a pole position lap if he doesn't throw it off the track through Blanchemont or the chicane. So we'll watch him as he comes across the line. Then we'll try and feed back through the rest of the drivers. Will this be pole position from the championship leader? An extra point for pole, remember, so all important for somebody like Ollie Smith, who's one point behind Martin Robertson, or the group fighting for third place, who are all split by about four points. So that extra point for pole, all important. Here he comes through the final chicane, gets on the power, and he heads to the line. Not the shortest route this time to the line, but he goes across the line. And it's not quicker. But it is quicker, quicker by Peter Harris, who goes in up into pole position by half a second. A 41.7 for Peter Harris. And he's round wide at the first corner. So that is his qualifying session over. He does not believe he can go any quicker than that. And that is a cracking lap by Peter Harris. Third place, Ollie Smith moves up to. That's ahead of his championship rival, which is all important. Sam Taylor moves up ahead of Tim Maragon in the battle for seventh. And in, currently in ninth place was Eric Mignon, but he shoots straight up into fifth place in, in the rankings. That's a much better lap by Eric. So we currently have championship rival leader Martin Robinson in sixth, while his rival is in third. But the closest to Peter Harris is Harry Neal. As the car goes off in front of Harry, that looks like it possibly could be 
Sam Dimelo, yes it is. And he's given a nice slipstream to Harry, but pulls over. So we'll stick with Harry Neal here and watch him as he comes through the first sector. He's got to find half a second to beat Peter Harris, who is doing an epic impression of Rubens Barrichello in 1994 when he got pole position on the Friday and sat in the pits watching everybody else try and beat his time on the wet track. That day, Barrichello stayed on pole for Jordan, their first ever pole position. Will Peter Harris take his first pole position in a qualifying session and that extra point, which will bring him within a point of third place in the championship already at this stage? The session is now over, so we're just going to see if anybody can go quicker on their last laps. Everybody's allowed to complete their laps. So here we go, we've got Harry Neal, he is the closest further up the track I believe we will have Martin Robinson come in across the line first so we'll head to him our championship leader down in sixth place he's got to find 1.1 seconds for pole position now we were on board with Martin's lap we know he had that error but I just don't see where he could find 1.1 from but we'll see here he comes down to a final chicane try and break as late as he can into this chicane a lot easier to break into this chicane than the old bus stop where it went the opposite direction and was far more tighter but here we go martin robinson to the line he's going to take the shortest route along the white pit wall and he goes up into second place and oh 34 thousandths off peter harris so can anybody beat that we're going to look back here comes ollie smith across the line and he goes third but then Cameron Biggs jumps up into pole position. Where's Cameron come from? He was about seventh in the times with 241.536. That is brilliant. But Harry Neal beats it. We saw the time, we saw the first half of that lap by Harry Neal, and it was clean enough to go into pole position by 77 thousandths of a second. And Harry Neal will take his first pole position of the season and possibly his first championship pole position of all Cameron Biggs in second place so close to that pole position but that he'll be pleased with the front row start after where he really was throughout that qualifying session third was the pit stop and sitting in the pit of Peter Harris is he on another lap I don't think he would have crossed the line again to be able to make it but we'll wait and see he's got a minute to get round he should make it Martin Robinson, our championship leader in fourth place. Fifth place for Ollie Smith, who at 40 had jumped up into third place and just got beat near the end of the lap. So our championship rivals, fourth and fifth. Sit for Mignon, who's in that battle for third in the championship. Seventh for Sam Dimelo. Eighth is Sam Taylor. And ninth for Tim Maragon. We will head back to Peter Harris who seems to be still on a lap so we'll see if he can make it. He's got 30 seconds to go. Should make it through the final chicane but whether it's actually a quick lap or an out lap I'm not really sure. We'll see as he comes through Blanchemont. He looks committed. So here he goes into the final chicane. Oh he's, a, he's out wide there. He's definitely pushing. Is he just out there for testing? We'll see as he comes across the line. Will he actually make it? He's got five, four, three, two, one second. He'll go across the line, but it's not a quick lap. Just fooling us there with an out lap, Peter. But there you go. Harry Neal goes into pole position for the opening race of tonight. At the beautiful Spa Frankenstein circuit. As the rain continues to pour, the mist rolls in off the Arden Forest. Harry Neal on pole, Cameron Big second, Peter Harris in third, Martin Robertson in fourth. It's an all blue front middle second row. We'll wait. The lights are all on on the cars. We're waiting for the lights to go out above the driver's head. 20 minutes to go. And it's away we go here at Spa. It's a good start by the front row, men. I don't think anyone got away badly. Sam Taylor may be at the back, but everybody else seems pretty equal as we head into the first corner and it's Harry Neal who leads Peter Harris challenging Cameron Biggs for second place but not quite will he make it through we'll have a look as they come down the hill no Biggs 
just gets ahead of Harris for second and Martin Robinson pops into third. Sam Dimelow's made a good start to move up into sixth place and Tim Maragon up into eighth. That's a good first corner by Tim. A few drivers going wide, that's Dimelow going wide and that's Harris. Oh, Harris off the track and almost into his, well, was into his teammate. That's going to let Ollie Smith pass. We'll see if we can catch a replay of what happened to Peter Harris as he come up over hill. Here we go, we're on board with Harris here. Runs a little bit wide, gets on the grass creek, catches it, just scrapes the barrier, but comes back on straight into his teammate. Luckily, both cars continue, and there's Ollie Smith coming past on the way to Lake Com. Back at the front now, we have two cars pulling away just slightly. Also, three cars pulling away slightly. Harry Neal, Cameron Biggs, and Martin Robinson. And Cameron Biggs will be trying to do the t Team Orange a good favour here because they have been slightly behind in the championship so far. But Martin Robinson, championship leader, will be just taking his time here. He doesn't need. Ollie Smith's the closest rival in the championship, but Harry Neal, third in the points, got a podium in the opening round, will be looking to try and take this win and close that 20 point gap between second and third. But this is the man we need to watch, Ollie Smith. He, was, he didn't have the greatest start last time out in either races, and he got second and first from the two races. So don't count him out, even though he's in fifth and already 6.2 behind Harry Neal. He's actually dropped back behind Peter Harris there. I didn't see, we must have missed that on the camera, but Ollie Smith dropped back behind Peter Harris and is now under pressure from Sam Dimelo and Eric Mignon. Well, I think it's Sam Taylor has dropped off the back of a pack with Tim Maragon. We'll watch this fight down into the final chicane who has dropped off the back of Peter Harris actually. And Ollie Smith seems to be struggling early on here. He's just got to keep dim load behind him. But as they cross the line for the opening lap, it is Harry Neal who leads with a 1.3 second lead over Cameron Biggs. Martin Robinson in third. And then there's a bit of a gap back to Peter Harris in fourth after his save at the top of Radion. Oh, and up the inside of Dimlo goes Eric Mignon. That was, a, that was a late move there by Mignon. And we'll just have a look back at that and see if we can catch it on the camera. Just a very late dive by Mignon. Oops, Dimlo just about sees him, turns out of it and just leaves enough room. But will they have swapped positions by the time they get down to the bottom? No, they haven't. Dimlo did somehow stay ahead of Mignon there two teammates for the Daytona 24-hour kart race com coming up in a couple of weeks and they certainly won't want to be crashing into each other here and having a very quiet 24 hours ahead of them at the Milton Keynes circuit. We'll head back to the front and Harry Neal still leading, still just stretching that gap out. Now Harry Neal, the 2017 Clubman Club 100 Sprints champion dominated that season and moved up into the elite class hasn't had the best of luck in that top class but still putting some good performances in the next year but hasn't been consistently in the cart since but certainly that Clubman championship was a dominant performance by Harry Neal, I believe Jack Bolton, Sam, Simon Lloyd finished in second and third, but were quite far back from Neil, who took an amazing amount of victories throughout that year. But the gap is now closing, and Cameron Biggs is closing down the gap to Harry Neal. The gap was 1.1, it's now 0.7, and Biggs, who is sitting down in seventh in the championship, could literally double his points with a win here today he's got 21 so far and he could put himself in a really strong position in the championship by winning this race oh and he's sideways through Blanchemont really committed the gap's down to 0.4 but if he does any more of that he will certainly 
not be able to catch every single one of them, but these top two are dropping Martin Robinson slightly. Holly Smith is closing back up to Peter Harris in fourth place, so we'll keep an eye on that, but we're on to lap three now. And we have just under 14 and a half minutes to go. So we're looking at a... Uh, possibly a 10 lap race here at Spa. Such a long circuit. Lap times of 2 minute 41 is the fastest by Cameron Biggs that time round. And he's now got the slipstream on Howie Neal through the bottom of Eau Rouge, up over the top of Radion. Gets it nicely done. Will that slipstream help? Howie Neal seemed to get a much better run though through the top of Radion. And that is not helped Biggs, but he's trying to slipstream. Martin Robinson closed up slightly as well and is only eight tenths behind this battle. But these top three have pulled away nicely and we'll be looking to round out the podium between the three of them now. But now the question is, will Biggs work together with Neil and try and pull away from the championship leader Robinson? Or will they just fight and bring Robinson into that battle as well? look further behind there is Peter Harris the man who thought he got the pole position today now currently four seconds off that podium battle but having a good run in fourth place so far it certainly won't harm his championship challenge to finish in fourth place but it will help his teammate if he can finish ahead of that red car in the background Ollie Smith the fastest point is his username but Ollie is sitting second in the championship remember only one point behind Robinson so it's really crucial that Peter Harris stays ahead of Ollie Smith here and fights him off for the next tw 12 minutes will he do a Gandalf all the way to the end or will he just try and push on oh and Smith's on the grass there oh I thought Smith was a goner to trying to turn in on the grass we'll head further back and there is Mignon, dropped back from Dimolo now. And in 8th place is Tim Maragon in the lovely orange arrows livery. I love that classic 2001 orange arrows livery. Reminds me of Jos Verstappen, Heitzhal Frentzen and Enrique Benaldi. Oh, and Maragon's got it sideways. That was more a Benaldi moment to be fair. And just further back you can see Sam Taylor just trying to get, still getting used to this game and the cars. Taylor, one of the test drivers and workmen for the Club 100 series along with Sam Dimelo. Do a great job with the carts and we do thank you for that. But currently Taylor's definitely getting, trying to get used to wet conditions here. But we're back to the front and there's our leaders going back through the top of Eau Rouge. And Harry Neal has just pulled out a bit of a gap here. He's just extended it to, well, it was to a second, but Big's got a good run through Eau Rouge. But it's just to and fro between these two, and Neal seems in good control of this race so far. Pushing hard enough, but was oh, as he misses an apex there, that's going to put Biggs right on his tail. He lost a good three tenths of a second through that corner. Remember, we do have the live chat here today, so you can comment when you, if you want to. We've got ten minutes, just over ten minutes to go, and these top three are just closing up slightly now. And Harry Neal is starting to feel the pressure. He's led from the front of this race, but these Cameron Biggs and Martin Robinson have kept there as Robinson runs very wide out of the corner with no name, and down to Puon, and that will cost him a bit of a gap behind Peter Harris just keeping that gap to his teammate at 4.5 as Robinson's wide again and Robinson's going to lose touch with the top two now and falls to 2.5 seconds almost back from the group yes 2.5 and he's going to have to do all that work again to close in and I've got to be honest Robinson's got to think of a championship here winning this race isn't his main concern. Ollie Smith, his closest rival, is two positions behind and isn't even near the back of Peter Harris at the moment as we're not seeing him pop up into screen. 
you can just see the two Alpine cars coming through and but Peter Harris question is if he catches Robinson is he going to go for that podium or is he going to follow the team it's very early in the season to be playing team orders but we've seen it before as we look at the front and all of a sudden Cameron Biggs is challenging Harry Neal for the lead of this race into the chicane the gap's down to under half a second both cars sliding out of the chicane but I think Biggs has to make the move soon when you start following a car for too long you end up starting to run at their pace and Cameron Biggs has more pace he's done a 2 minutes 41.2 as the fastest lap of the race. He has the pace to win this race, but he has to get past Harry Neal. And as M the great Murray Walker always said, catching is one thing, passing is quite another. Now will the aerodynamic effect catch Biggs out? No, it actually, actually it's Harry Neal running wide again. And this is Biggs' big opportunity right now. He's got the slipstream on Harry Neal. Can he get through as they head up to Lecom, Harry Neal weaving, trying to break the slipstream. Have to be careful in case Biggs gets alongside. Doesn't, but the gap's really closed down. Harry Neal sliding into that corner. Biggs just a little bit more tidy. And this might give you a bit of an idea of why Harry Neal struggled in the tyre wear race the last time out. He's a bit, lot more slidey on the car. But this battle for the lead is the thing we'll concentrate on. But looking behind, just to check, no, the two teammates still running light at CERN. And here is Ollie Smith, who's made a mistake and is now caught by Sam Dimelo and Eric Mignon. And has, <laughs> this is not the race Ollie Smith wanted. After his opening rounds to the season with a first and second, he's now having to fight off Dimelo and Mignon for sixth, fifth, sorry. So that was not. We didn't catch what happened to him there, but Ollie Smith certainly having to push a lot harder than he wanted to, and maybe over pushing it. I think maybe he needs to just uh, calm it down because this car in this weather can bite, especially around the Spa Francorchamps circuit. Head back to the front, and Cameron Biggs has kept the gap close to Harry Neal this lap. A bit of a slide again, but nothing to over dramatic the 56 right up behind Harry Neal now as they head towards Blanchemar he doesn't want to lose too much aerodynamic wake into the corner and he doesn't he's, these cars really do stick to the ground and Biggs a bit of a wobble will he get a t he does a dummy into the chicane Neil knows he's too far back but he does defend slightly much better chicane there by Harry Neal and he managed to extend the gap a little bit and Cameron Biggs now needs to start closing that gap, gap back down because it is now over a second to the leader and he now only has just over six minutes to go that is about three laps including this one Will they get three laps? Yes, they will. They should get just about three laps in. But it doesn't mean the rest of the field will. So that's going to be crucial, especially for somebody like Ollie Smith, who has to fight off the attentions of Sam Dimelo and Eric Mignon at this time. But we've this, we'll watched these guys up into Lecom. Can Biggs just too far back to take a dive? He's later on the brakes. And Neil is just having to take it a little bit easier he's first on the scene to every corner so if suddenly there's a puddle build up or somebody off the track or anything Neil is first there so he just has to be a little bit more careful Biggs can see how late he can break and go that little bit further if needs be and these two are now 4.2 clear of Martin Robinson who now has a slowdown as well not the race that Robinson was hoping considering he was right up with his leaders early on but he is still clear of his teammate who won't be challenging him Peter Harris we go back to Ollie Smith who still hasn't pulled away from Sam Dimelo the club 100 test driver really putting the pressure on to Smith right now 
with his neon in, neo inspired Formula E Red Bull Junior car if that makes sense oh sideways by Dimolo but he managed to catch it Eric Mignon not far behind just trying to apply the pressure to Dimolo to help his teammate Ollie Smith out remember these two red cars are leading the Constructors Championship at the moment by one point over Robinson and Peter Harris so the tables will turn on that with this result as it stands with Team Blue of Robinson and Harris moving up into the championship lead so it will be swings and roundabouts in this season further back there is Sam Taylor clear 36 seconds back from Eric Mignon I guess he's had a spin or something there because or a couple of spins at least because that gap has extended out but he is 31 seconds ahead of Tim Maragon who was ahead of him early on so I presume Tim has had a couple of offs himself but we head back to the front and Harry Neal has pulled that gap clear he's now almost two seconds ahead of Cameron Biggs and has got time to just calm things down control this race and hopefully for him keep that gap at about that going on to a final lap to be able to ooh, he was close to the track limits over top of Radion but he has got the gap to be able to just, just ease it off a percent or two and just control this to the end in these conditions you don't want to be taking risks and the 66 of Harry Neal just be he knows how to win races he knows how to take the pressure and he also knows Cameron Biggs is quicker with the fastest lap of the race but he's managed to control that he's managed to keep the, keep the car in front when the pressure was on with Biggs and it was a mistake by Biggs which just extended that lead out you can see Martin Robinson in third and here there's Peter Harris on his own in fourth place still a good result for Harris was up there early on and has managed to fight off Ollie Smith who's second in the championship till Ollie made a mistake and that has given Peter Harris a quiet drive home currently in fourth place if he makes no more mistakes but we'll head back to the front and watch Ollie Smith here into the Fanny chicane a good race by Ollie didn't go quite to plan in the opening two rounds of the series he's um, sitting down in seventh from the championship as we said earlier and this will certainly boost him he'll move ahead of Mignon, he'll move ahead of Dimolo, he'll possibly move ahead of Harris as well because he's only two points back from Harris so he could jump straight up into fourth in the championship with this result And he hasn't hit a wall as he did at Suzuka, which is great news for him. But the cars are coming round. We've got 1 minute 20 on the clock, which means this will be the final lap as they come across the line this time. This is the penultimate lap, be the final lap as they cross the line. Harry Neal extended that gap to 2.5 seconds. Neal doing a brilliant job at it. They pushed pulling this gap out so he can have a nice, easy final lap. Nobody being able to go quicker than that 24. 2 minute 41.292 by Cameron Biggs. So he may pick up the fastest lap point. Everyone will be is a bit spaced out. So they'll all be pushing for this final lap point. But further back, we have a bit of pressure being applied to Ollie Smith again. Remember, the next race is a reverse grid race. So currently, Tim Maragon will be on pole with Sam Taylor. And Eric Mignon and Sam Dimlo will round out row two when we head to Interlagos. But this is the closest battle we have so far. Ollie Smith trying to keep his championship hopes alive at this early stage of the season with oh Dimlo sideways across the top of Radio. These cars have so much grip that you can sort of get away with that, but it does make you make you stand up and sit on the edge of your seat or sit on the edge of your seat sorry at that time because you just don't know whether it will go round but that has given Smith some breathing space and put him under the 
Sam Dimlo under pressure from Eric Mignon. Sam Taylor has now finished and he will finish in 8th place today. Finishing not last. So that's good points for the green team, uh, for the whites in the championship with two Sams as they try and stay ahead of Team Orange. So realistically, Sam's done, Sam Taylor has done his job by beating Tim Maragon, which he, Tim has just crossed the line as well for ninth place and will take reverse grid pole. But we head back to the front and there is Harry Neal, your leader in this race, now out to three seconds. This is a great final couple of laps by Harry Neal and he can clutch it home from here as he heads out towards Blanchemont, past the cart track on the right hand side that Club 100 regularly use for their flyaway event. But Harry Neal through Blanchemont, still keeping the pressure on, trying to extend that gap as far as he can. But I guess he'll take it easy into the final chicane. But Harry Neal, the 2017 Clubman Sprints Champion, is coming through to take his first victory of the season and his second podium this year as Harry Neal wins it by 3.3 seconds from Cameron Biggs who just fights off Martin Robertson near the end of the race here through the final chicane comes Peter Harris for a solid fourth place in a bit of no man's land altogether that's fourth place for Peter Harris fifth place for Ollie Smith as he comes across the line and we've got a fight for sixth place between Sam Dimlo and Eric Mignon. And it's Sam Dimlo who takes it just as he was getting rid of a penalty. And he managed to just get rid of it. But your winner is Harry Neal. Who moves up in the championship pole position. And the full points for victory will definitely put Harry into the championship fight. So we'll just have a quick look at the results again as I save the replay. Here we go, the results with Harry Neal winning from Cameron Biggs, Martin Robinson in third and Peter Harris in fourth, being in the blue team, move up into the lead of the championship, the Constructors' Championship, and Martin Robinson will continue to lead the Drivers' Championship. But that will be an extended lead over fifth place, Ollie Smith, who will need a big result around Interlagos. Sixth is De Sam Dimelo, seventh Eric Mignon, eighth Sam Taylor, and ninth Tim Maragon. And just notice right at the bottom, fastest lap for Martin Robinson on the final lap means he gains the extra point and extends his lead by that extra point as well. So very important just little margins for Martin Robinson but he's now got a bit of a grasp on this championship going into round four which will be around the Interlagos circuit so for now we will be taking a very quick break and the next race will be starting in about 10 minutes time so it's we start at 21.50 it looks like As you can see Cameron Biggs saying about the spray it wasn't the best conditions for you to see but here we are we've had jumped from Spa to sunny Brazil and the drivers will be heading out onto the circuit soon for a bit of practice but I will be taking a quick break and heading back over to you ready for the start of the race in a few minutes time.
Hello and welcome back to the historic Interlager circuit where we will be hosting round four of the Clubman class in the GT Sport Club 100 Championship. You're currently watching Ollie Smith who finished down in fifth place in opening race and he will be looking for a big result to move himself back up in the championship. Currently just looking at the times. There is your championship leader Martin Robinson in a very brightly coloured blue BMW followed by his teammate close behind on Robinson running wide there but the two blue BMWs looking to cement Robinson's place at the top of the drivers championship and now have to defend their constructors lead as well after that opening round where they finished in third and fourth place respectively between Robinson and Harris there is some green McLaren of Harry Neal, your round three winner, who dominated and controlled the race at Spa in the Red Bull Juniors that you can see earlier in this video. And Eric Mignon, currently third fastest in the Ferrari. What else colour would a Ferrari 458 Italia be? But red with the Belgian flag on the wing mirrors that's a good lap time in practice by Eric Mignon and he could be a contender in this race after finishing third at Suzuka in the pit stop race last time out fourth fastest is Cam I know it says third on the side but that's because Mignon has just pitted there's Cameron Biggs who really impressed in the second race in the third race which we just had finishing second behind Harry Neal and that was a real boost to his championship he was a bit worried about being cut drift from the championship fight he was still in the fight for third coming into today but uh, his second place really did cement his chances of qualification for the top lobby in season five whenever that may be the way everything is heading at the moment and there's a good lap time in there by Lando Champ 2005 Sam Taylor there in what is a beautiful Citroen futuristic looking Citroen in the GR4 class and Sam that's a good lap time there so if he can put it together in a race he will be able to be there and help push Dimolo further up championship as well as himself as he is riding behind I think yes Tim Maragon in the Lamborghini Hurricane a lovely looking car in the orange livery Tim trying to look for a season best result I think he's finished ninth in all the races so far just with the odd error and things like that so if Tim can knock that on its head and he'll be starting from pole position due to reverse grid these two will be the front row men of Tim Maragon and Sam Taylor in third place will be Eric Mignon who is currently third in this session in that Ferrari we saw he'll be third on the grid with Sam Dimelow in fourth and fifth place will be Sam Taylor he really needs a good start from this race to try and get away from Robinson and could do with winning this race to reignite his championship contention as we after this race we will be at the halfway point of the season so it's Citroen on pole position of Sam Taylor for some reason Tim Maragon is at the back of the grid I'm not sure why that is on the reverse grid we may have to there may be a restart on this I'm not sure but we'll go with it as it is for now 30 minutes to go here around the Interlagos circuit and we have Sam Taylor on pole position and they all get away and the BMWs make a brilliant start from the middle of the third row and have moved up into fourth and fifth already but it's the two Citroen teammates who lead in first and second place third place for Eric Mignon, fourth place for Peter Harris, fifth place for Martin Robinson sixth off the line for Harry Neal he's gained a few places off the start well, 
fact we're just currently seeing how this we've got a few lobby issues in lobby one but here we go it's sam taylor leading the way as we come around the first second sector of the lap and the two citrons will be loving this position right now two sams out in front minion in third and oh no it's not because there is minion alongside Sa oh robinson right around the outside in the midsection and he's going to have the inside for this next corner and he's got Minion and up into third place for the championship leader. In fifth place we have Peter Harris, sixth for the race winner last time out, Harry Neal. Seventh for Cameron Briggs and Ollie Smith down in eighth place. He's lost three positions off the grid and will be needing to push hard with his teammate. Right, no it's not his teammate right behind him, his teammate is currently further up the field. But down, now Cameron Biggs has got past him. So down in 8th place is Ollie Smith and with a penalty to get rid of as well. Tonight is going from bad to worse for Ollie Smith but can he recover it with a good strategy? Look further ahead, there is Cameron Biggs who had that good podium last time out and he is now going to get a run on Harry Neal as they come through turn 3. No river on that track this time by Mignon and Harris are side by side just ahead. Will Mignon fights him off, yes he does with the power of a Ferrari but with late, the stability of a BMW let Harris dive up the inside and Neil's gone through it as well and Biggs and oh Mignon's just completely missed out there and we'll go back and have a look at that in a minute but here comes Ollie Smith up the outside of Eric Mignon I don't think that's going to work and it, oh and good cut back there by Ollie Smith up the inside of Mignon and Mignon loses four places on that lap We'll have a look from Cameron Biggs's position at that move. We'll go on board with him as he looks behind Harry Neal, race winner from round three. Peter Harris goes for the move, runs a bit, little bit wide. Harry Neal runs wide, and Cameron Biggs just dives up the inside of two in one, almost getting Peter Harris. Does he get Peter Harris as we head up the hill? I'm not sure he will. Oh, he's on the outside. Harris back up the inside. And so does Harry Neal. Will Neal get past? As we watch this, he's past now. It's holding it around the outside, Biggs is. And ooh, doesn't quite make it through. So we're now back at the front. And S Sam Taylor continues to lead. This is impressive by Taylor. He was at the front of the grid in Suzuka and just dropped back, but he got the start right this time by. And he now has a 1.1 second lead over his teammate, Sam Dimlow, who is fighting off the attentions of Martin Robinson in the BMW. And Harris goes for a move again on Harry Neal down into that corner, and he's made it stick, but Neal will have the power of the McLaren round the outside and hold on to the position, I feel as they head up into the second part of the lap, the twisty section, which will suit the BMW a little bit more than McLaren. Defensive by Neil. But that's bringing Cameron Biggs into play. And it's also allowing Ollie Smith and... Um, is that Ollie Smith at the back? Yes, it is. Ollie Smith still in the fight. Peter Harris and... Ha is having to fight off the attentions of Cameron Biggs now in that Jaguar. Now the interesting thing will be who will be the first pit? Whose strategy will fire out first? At the moment, oh and Sam Taylor's lost a lot of time in that middle sector and he now has the attentions of his teammate Sam Dimlow all over the back of him and Martin Robinson. Now Dimlow will have to be careful here if he makes a move he can't let Robinson come through with him and formation flying by these two Citroen sacks nicely done down into the first corner blocked the line for Robinson didn't let him have a chance and Taylor misses the apex of turn two there just balks Dimelo a little bit will Taylor think about letting Dimelo go not by the looks of it at the moment even though the indicator is flashing on Taylor's car but it was for the whole of last week so <laughs> He obviously hasn't found that button to switch it off yet. So these top three are pulling away currently from Harry Neal. 
we've got a little bit of a gap, but remember, Neil was in that fight. Biggs has got Biggs and Eric Mignon have got past Peter Harris. But Ollie Smith is still down in eighth place. In ninth, there is Tim Maragon, who for some reason wasn't on the pole position. I'm not sure why that was. But he is running in ninth place currently and looking to try and get back onto the back of the pack. Maybe he's already pitted. But at the front, it's still Sam Taylor who leads from Sam Dimelo. It's the two Sams holding off Martin Robinson as they go through John Cow and out onto the long bending left-hander towards the pits. This Citroen very quick in a straight line, just going to hold off Robinson, I think. But this is a massive slipstream for Robinson, double slipstream, and Dimelo's going for it. We're on board with Sam Dimelo now. Will he go for a move on his teammate? Looks into the centre S. Oh, he's trying hard not to. Taylor breaking really late. And that was really good defensive work by Taylor. But is he holding up his teammate? They're backing them into the pack. And it's allowed Harry Neal here in fourth place to close that gap. He is now on the tail of these leaders and in a position where actually Cameron Biggs and Eric Mignon are bringing the rest of the field back into it and we could have an eight car train for the lead at this rate. Especially with the pit stops that will be coming up around, if they're doing a one stop strategy around 15 minutes with a two stop strategy, they may pit in the next lap and a half just depends what they plan to do I think most of the drivers will be looking at soft tyres we'll have a quick look through actually what everybody's on there's Taylor on the soft tyres as Dimlo holds off Robinson again and T Dimlo gaining patient behind his teammate Taylor but Taylor's doing nothing wrong and just controlling the pace it's backing his teammate up as Dimelo looks to the inside doesn't make it through that time and Robinson looking to the inside Dimelo oh, doesn't quite make it into Junkow just flicking through everybody on the soft tyres I believe yes everybody on the soft tyres but we're going back to his battle for the lead as it is now a five car train as Harry Neal and Cameron Biggs and Eric Mignon in sixth have closed in Taylor actually backing Dimelo, his teammate, into the rivals as Dimelo goes to the inside across the line and will take the lead as Robinson dives to the inside and takes oh takes Sam Dimelo out wide and we're free abreast through the middle of the centre S. Harry Neal trying to get involved here and I don't know how this is going to come out as they come out of the centre S down the back straight. We're looking at Sam Dimelo, who's just got the lead ahead of Martin Robinson. Harry Neal trying to slipstream into second place. Pushes Dimelo along. So Dimelo will lead. Oh, Biggs, he's sideways. He's took him out wide. He hit Robinson. He hit Neal. And that has allowed the two Citroens to move back into first and second place. And Eric Mignon moves up into third. Harry Neal stays in fourth. And Robinson drops down to fifth. That's massive news for Ollie Smith, who's currently still in eighth place. But we'll have a look back at that from the view of Cameron Biggs, if we can find it. Here we go, as he holds off Ollie Smith. Just loses it under braking, going for fourth pl fifth place. Oh, and dives to the inside. <laughs> Just tries to avoid everybody, and probably did a good job of not T-boning the whole field, as... There he drops down to 7th place. He lost the most out of all of that. So I, I think it will probably be a forgotten about by the end of the race. But Sam and has Mignon who has got past Sam Taylor. But Sam Taylor, that cut Citroen's very slippery in a straight line. He heads, looks to the outside. Harry Neal having a look at Sam Taylor now. And will, will Harry Neal get both of them down into this corner? Yes, he has a go at the Ferrari of Mignon as well. Oh, bit of contact. He's through and Harry Neal two in one into the centre S and moves up into second place. He definitely had some porridge this morning with Harry Neal or some Bottas porridge because he's up into second place and looking to try and get a double victory here tonight. And that will really fire up his championship challenge. Cameron Biggs now having a look at Sam Taylor who has dropped down to 6th place in this last few corners. 
We'll just see back if we can see why when Mignon got past Taylor. No, we can't. So we'll just go back to the race. And now there's a train for second place of Harry Neal, Eric Mignon. Martin Robinson runs a little bit wide, but he's been backed up by his teammate Peter Harris, doing a perfect teammate's job yet again. Cameron Biggs in sixth. Seventh for Sam Taylor on the back of his pack, still doing really well on his debut season. And in ninth, Ollie, sorry, eighth is Ollie Smith trying to get rid of another penalty. This night is not going well for the guy who come into second in the championship, one point behind Martin Robinson. And will be really wanting this night to be over with unless he has some strategy up his sleeve. Just have a look at his car info. There's nothing special. Oh, he's saving a lot of fuel, actually. Yes, a lot of fuel saved by... Sam... Uh, by Ollie Smith. There's a lot of different fuel levels actually being used up here. So, Sam Dimlo now leads the pack. He's ahead and clear of Eric Mignon. 3.1 seconds. And this is good, great news for Sam Dimlo. He'll be looking for his first win of the season. And his first win in a couple of seasons, to be fair. He didn't win last season in the Premier Class. Got relegated down. And will be looking to try and be re-promoted up into the Premier Class. But we'll look back now where the fight is. It's Eric Mignon fighting off Harry Neal. Now these guys... Three seconds off Sam Dimelo, but remember there's pit stops and fuel strategies come into effect. And now we have seen the fuel saving of Ollie Smith. Is he trying to go all the way to the end of the race? I doubt it. But if he's got to have, he's certainly going to save a lot of time in the pit stop whenever he does it. Neil runs wide and it's up the inside. He's got a penalty, he gets rid of that, but it allows Martin Robinson through in the BMW up into third place. Robinson, the championship leader, who has not finished outside the top four this season. Last time out at Spa was his first time off the podium. But Harry Neal is on something tonight and really trying to cement his place in the top three in the points. So he'll be looking to fight back against Robinson here. He's going to look into the inside as we go on the board with Harry Neal. Robinson goes to defend slightly, but Neil decides to push him along. A little tactic there by Neil as he catches the grass as well. Oh, he has a penalty, so he's not looking, looking to push Robinson along. I believe the rule for overtaking with a penalty isn't in this season. It was too hard to police last year, so we uh, just decided it was worth going. A flash of a hazards by Robinson, he knows... Neil isn't trying to challenge too much, but this battle is allowing Mignon just to pull slightly clearer in second place. And looking behind, there is Peter Harris holding off Cameron Biggs. And as I say, Peter Harris doing a perfect teammate's job for Martin Robinson here. He's just following him home and keeping as many rivals away from him as possible. It's probably not purpose by Peter, he's probably trying to win the championship himself, but ironically he's doing a great job and we're going to look back at Ollie, Ollie Smith here. he's got another penalty to get rid of we're going to go on board with him and see if we can hear some of this fuel saving he's doing it's a little bit short shifting here in the Toyota Coasting into that corner. Yes, a lot of fuel saving being done by Ollie Smith. Let's see how late he breaks into turn one. Because that will tell us exactly how much fuel he's trying to save. If he break, doesn't break into there and coast, he will certainly be looking. As we have some pit stops at Sam Taylor going into the pits and Harry Neal. And they're really low on fuel. A massive coast into a first corner by Ollie Smith. So Ollie Smith has a lot more pace than he's shown at this stage. But now the pit stops are here, he's gonna to have to go for it. Let's have a look at the, just under a third of a about a third of a tank left. So inspired strategy there by Ollie Smith. Will it pull off? But here is Sam Dimlo. Three seconds clear about Mignon. 
Will Sam be looking to pit soon because his teammate just did? Yes, he will. I believe Sam Dimolo will be pitting this lap. So it'll be interesting to see where he comes out. Tim Maragon has come out ahead, uh, is ahead of Harry Neal and actually I think Harry Neal, let's see how these pit stops come out because he seems to be behind Sam Taylor on the timing tower but entered the pits ahead so we'll let that all shake itself out first. But we'll watch Sam Dimlo who is coming round towards Junkau for the final time before he pits. It's 13 minutes to go. Just over 13 minutes to go. And Cameron Biggs has the fastest lap of the race. So that shows his pace with a 38-1. But ha Sam Dimelo will be pitting this lap. He keeps it tight, heads to the pit lane. Who else will be following him into the pit? Mignon must have made a mistake on that lap because he's lost about a second. Or is he running out of fuel? We'll have a quick look. No, Mignon is through. And Martin Robinson keeps going. So Robinson takes the lead of this race. Peter Harris moves up in second. And Ollie Smith moves up into third. Now this tactic by Ollie Smith. Will he try and do it non-stop? Does he believe he doesn't have the pace round into Largus and he's going to try and non-stop or the shortest stop possible? Be interesting to see. Harry Neal who is on is our marker at this moment in time it's coming around the final few corners he has a slow down to get rid of let's see where he comes out in compared to everybody else at the end of the pit lane so Harry Neal coming across the line now everybody else in the pits it, he was running in third when he pitted so he comes down into first corner it's very hard to tell with his timing tower I can hear cars in the pit lane so here comes Harry Neal round the corner. Sam Dimelo is out ahead of him. And there's Eric Mignon. So Harry Neal will stay in third place. And Cameron Biggs will come out in fourth. Will he beat Sam Taylor out? Just about. But he does have to get his tyres up to temperature. So we'll head back to the front. And here's Martin Robinson ending his lap. Will Robinson head to the pits this time by? We'll see as he comes around this corner. It is this next corner coming up. Yes, he does. Robinson heads for the pits. Will Peter Harris, his teammate, head for the pits as well to back him up? We'll have a look here. Yes, Harris is in, but Ollie Smith isn't. Is this the inspired strategy call that Ollie Smith has been running since the start of this race? He qualified, well, he was put on the grid in fifth place, dropped to eighth early on and has been cruising and saving fuel all the way along and his tyres are in immaculate condition the question is can he make it to the end he's got a good 11 minutes to go and not much fuel it's certainly probably going to need a splash and dash but let's just see how he goes this could be an inspired drive by Ollie Smith maybe he's just thinking I won't win this race on this strategy but I can just get the best result possible from it and maybe beat Martin Robinson and close that gap in the championship. Let's see. But further behind of the pit stopped cars, Sam Dimelo is in second place and our current leader who has stopped. Martin Robinson comes out and beats Eric Mignon out and beats Harry Neal out and sits now second, a clear second in the race. Mignon in third of the pit stoppers. Peter Harris holding off Harry Neal so that worked well for Peter Harris because he was a bit further back from Harry Neal Cameron Biggs down in 7th that has not worked out well for Biggs who claimed a podium at round 3 and Sam Taylor has dropped a bit further behind but he's still in touch with the pack if anything goes awry with Tim Maragon they're 19 seconds off the pack in ninth. But let's head to the front and Ollie Smith goes round again. Smith is trying to finish this race without a pit stop. There's no doubt about it. He's trying to get to the end of this race and he has a 30 second lead over Sam Dimelo. He can turn the engine down. He can coast. He can lift and coast. And we'll go on board with him and you can hear him doing the lift and coast. 
So he's lifting off the throttle about 200 meters before the corner when you'd normally be breaking about the 150 100 meter board into that corner. We'll go on but and with Dimelo into the same corner and you'll hear that Ollie Smith lifted on the 200 meter board. When will Sam Dimelo break for this corner coming up? About 75 metres, so Ollie Smith is looking at saving that 125 metres of fuel. Now, it may not sound a lot, but Ollie Smith is also keeping his pace up. Because at the start of his lap, he had a 30 second lead over Sam Dimelo. He now has a 29.4 lead over Dimelo. The gap is coming down, but it's not coming down quick enough. So will Ollie Smith feel the need to pit? Here we go, he comes around this corner and he doesn't pit again. Ollie Smith is making the end of this race. The only question is, does he have enough fuel? This could be an absolute inspired piece of strategy by the Toyota driver. We'll look back, there's Dimlo by himself, but he needs to get a move on now. He needs to push on. But he's two seconds clear of Robinson. In fourth is Eric Mignon, fighting off the attention of Peter Harris, Harry Neal and Cameron Biggs. As you can see, I'm all in a the line there. And this is an epic battle for fourth place in this race. And I'll be honest, they probably all think it's for a final podium position. Because they think Ollie Smith needs to pit. So down into the centre rest, this battle for fourth place continues. Peter Harris closing in, really nailing the apex of turn two there. But he has the McLaren of Harry Neal, who was and still is in inspired form here tonight, dominated the opening round well around the wet spa circuit. And seems to be enjoying this McLaren around Interlagos as well. But Mignon loves these pit stop races, finished on podium last time out. Sam Dimelo was fastest lap holder at Suzuka as well, so him being second in the race isn't a surprise. But what is a surprise is that car there, Ollie Smith, who will be running on fumes at the end of this race. Fastest lap of 39 laps last time round, two seconds off the fastest lap of the race set by Martin Robinson. And Smith pits! He's not going to make it, so Smith pits! He's got 3% of fuel remaining. So how quick can he come round? And there is Sam Dimelo having to push. He's coming out the final corner. He should take the lead here. But it's how quick can Ollie Smith pit? His pit crew waiting for him in the pit lane. We'll try and watch his stop and see how quick it is. In comes the Toyota. Quick, quick tyre change. And he's down. Fuel going in. When will he get away from his stop? Oh, it's a long stop. It's not going to work for Smith, is it? He comes out of the pits now. And there is Dimelo. There is Robinson. That is your fight for the lead of this race. And let's see where Smith comes out in front of him. Peter Harris pushing Eric Mignon around the corner. And there is Ollie Smith coming out. And he's come out in fifth place. So, realistically, that strategy's worked. He was in eighth, and he's moved back up into fifth place and has a realistic shot at a podium position here. You'll have the fresh boots on and low fuel, whereas the others will have used their tyres over the last 10 minutes of this race to try and fight as well. So, Ollie Smith in a strong position to try and get a podium position. But back at the front, Martin Robinson has took the lead. We'll have a look at replay. We missed it damn we missed it but martin robinson the championship leader trying to take another victory here this season it'll be his second of the season and it will put him in with one hand on the championship trophy at the halfway stage obviously a lot can happen in the second half of the season but with the inspired form robinson's been on not outside the top four in the races He'll be looking at 
a championship and would be disappointed if he doesn't have it at the end of this year. But Sam Dimolo will continue to fight. He's in the fight for third in the championship. And I'll be honest, the fight for third in the championship was 25 points for Neil, 25 points for Dimolo, 25 points for Mignon, 23 for Harris and 21 for Biggs. Realistically, everyone sort of finished in opposite positions in this race. And they'll be about equal on the points again. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out ready for next week. But here is Dimolo trying to push Martin Robinson into a mistake. Can he do that? We'll see if Robinson, who has been very controlled in this race, he got pushed wide when Cameron Biggs lost control and cuts across the inside of the corner but apart from that he's been quietly moving forward throughout the race and is now sitting in a strong position with fastest lap as well for the extra point Dimilo keeps pushing we have just over three minutes of this race remaining so you're looking at two laps left around this interlager circuit and unnoticed to us there is Ollie Smith the inspired strategy call to save fuel while in eighth place has worked and he's now up into third place with some fresh boots on unfortunately for him he's eight seconds off the next driver so he's not going to be catching the top two unless there's an incident further back Peter Harris is being cha challenged by Cameron Biggs who's got ahead of Harry Neal and the Jaguar on the inside with BMW on the outside and Harris is going to lose out here I believe unless he can hang it around the outside I don't think he will and that's going to allow Harry Neal to have a look at him into the next corner Neal in that slippery Har uh, McLaren but will he have enough into the next corner we'll see he has a look Will he be late enough on the brakes? That BMW is so stable on the brakes. And he doesn't quite make it through. So back to the battle for second place. And there is Eric Min... Sorry, third place. And there is Eric Mignon. It's following Smith. He's managing to keep up with him. Sliding that Ferrari into the corner. And this is another good drive by the Belgian. These guys only 10 seconds off the lead, but I don't think they're going to be closing that down. And I think Ollie Smith will be satisfied with a podium. But we're going round towards the start, the final lap. And Sam Dimolo is still applying the pressure on the leader, Martin Robinson. That Citroen is very slippery in a straight line. And you can see in the top left the gap coming down so quickly in a straight line. It's down to four temps already. Where will it be by the end of the straight? Robinson weaving to try and get the Citroen out the slipstream and he's halved the gap by the end of the straight. So if Dimbolo can keep up with the BMW through the midsection he may just get a drag race to the line which between the two the Citroen will win it. But we'll, let's see all aggressive by Robinson going defensive not when he really needs to to be fair. Even with a slipstream, Dimolo wouldn't have caught him on that straight. But Robinson missing the apex there, he's starting to feel the pressure that Dimolo is placing on him. Will we have a new winner in Sam Dimolo, or will Martin Robinson take his second win of the season and his third podium? We're going to stick with this battle as they come around, and then we'll flick back to a battle for third place as they finish this race finishes. Robinson just missing the odd apex and running a little bit wide there that's giving Dimolo every incentive he wants to try and win this race but we have three seconds remaining on the clock that means this will be the final lap Martin Robinson only has one more breaking point to get right to try and win here at Interlagos he slides it into the corner he's a bit slow off the apex and he's wide he's wide will this give Dimolo the run it's going to be a drag race to the line. Gasly and Hamilton-esque. Will the BMW make it? Citroen just trying to gain the slipstream. But I think it's going to be too late. 
as they come up to the line and Martin Robinson, the championship leader, is going to take another victory. Sam Dimelo must have had a penalty easing across the line to try and get rid of it as he crosses. Third place will go to Ollie Smith with an inspired strategy call from eighth on the opening lap. Eric Mignon in fourth, Cameron Biggs in fifth, Peter Harris in sixth, round three winner Harry Neal down in seventh place. Here comes Sam Taylor who had a really good drive at the start of this race in the lead, getting rid of a penalty on the line, but finishes down in eighth. But he will be pleased with his opening stint to this race where he led early on, especially considering this is only his fourth round in this championship. And here comes Tim Maragon coming round to take ninth place and score some important points for his championship team's championship but Martin Robinson took win and the fastest lap there ahead of Sam Dimelo but your championship leader with two wins on the board is Martin Robinson who will be hard to catch with four rounds to go so as we if I can find my controller where's my controller gone there it is, sorry about that <laughs> Just save the replay because that was an inspired strategy call by Ollie Smith to score some strong points. He loses out to Robinson, first to third, and the fastest lap to Robinson. But he had to do something to try and regain his second in the championship because Harry Neal early in that race looked like trying to take the championship lead, never mind second. So the points will be worked out ready for next week. But there is your result of race two. Martin Robinson wins it by 1.1 seconds over Sam Dimelo. The gap was a lot shorter at the end, but Dimelo had to get rid of a track limits penalty. Ollie Smith with that long first stint moving up into third. Eric Mignon in fourth. Strong result for him in another pit stop race. Third and fourth for him this season. Cameron Biggs, who was second in the opening race tonight, finishes fifth. Peter Harris takes a fourth and a sixth from tonight's race. Harry Neal takes a win and a seventh place. He'll be a little bit disappointed after his early pace in that race. Eighth for Sam Taylor and ninth for Tim Maragon. So that is the end of the racing for tonight. Next week we will be heading... For the same format around two different circuits so i will just quickly check the calendar i've completely forgot where it will be we will have the seaside circuit in the red bull juniors which is the one with the deaf chicane i believe and the GR4 cars will be round the famous Australian Baffer circuit with the night race. Mm. Let's hope there's no kangaroos on the track because they're not going to see much where they're going with the night around the Baffer circuit. It's set so it'd probably be dusk to start with but it turns to night. And one thing we know at the moment is Martin Robinson in that BMW will be very strong around the twists of Bathurst but will the Citroen of Sam Dimelo or Sam Taylor be so quick on that straight that that will negate any advantage the BMW has or will Ollie Smith in that Toyota come up with yet another inspired strategy to score well in the second race we will find that all out but thank you for joining us tonight just a few notes in the next week tomorrow is the club 100 i racing championship over on the double dash motorsport media page with howard mitchell and andrew maffer commentating i'll be racing in that alongside many other club 100 names this weekend alpha live We'll have live action from four different venues. The British Mini Bikes from Rara in the Lake District. The Teesside Sprint Championship from Middlesbrough. The British first round of the British Kart Championship from Clay Pigeon down in Dorset. And Wilton Mill Kart Club will be back again for their second round of the championship in Northamptonshire. So... 
while it may be the Monaco Grand Prix weekend, make sure you have two screens ready. You can watch the F1 and pick a choice of four different rounds that, that Alpha Live will be filming at. I will be down at the British Championship at Clay Pigeon on one of the camera mounts there, so I will be enjoying the action down there. But for tonight, I thank you very much for tuning in and we will see you next week for rounds five and six of the championship as Marty Robinson tries to close in on that championship crown. <laughs>